So today is the last lesson of the year. Um, well, maybe. I want to encourage you to try doing this lesson on page 667. Um, it, you can work on it on your own. You can use Desmos. Uh, what it would do, it would give you a good understanding of today's lesson. Uh, it will help you a little bit with where are some of these graphs coming from, why do they look like that, so that the, when we do them in as examples here or for homework, it's not the first time you've seen a graph like that. So spend some time going through that um, lab. I'm assuming that you will have done that. So we'll now get into the lesson. It's graphing reciprocals of quadratic functions. The last lesson was on graphing reciprocals of linear functions. So what we had was we drew some sort of a line as the basic f of x, and then we took 1 over f of x, and we did some things to it. We looked for where was the x-intercept. That turned into an asymptote. We knew there was an asymptote like this, and then there was some, a graph that was drawn. Uh, we're going to do the same thing today, same rules, same principles, except that the graph we're looking at is a quadratic function first. Okay, if you have a quadratic function, you have a couple of things that could happen. There could be zero asymptotes, there could be one asymptote, or two. If you think back to the linear, there was almost always one vertical asymptote. Now there will be a couple other situations. So we're going to get one of these three types of graphs. Okay, we'll try to do an example of each one. And you'll see why they look like that. Okay, so let's try the first one. Uh, remember that to do this, we're always going to take the original graph first. And so in this case, it's negative x squared minus 1. What's the vertex here? It's 0, negative 1. And this opens down. Okay, so... I'll put negative 1 there. Uh, maybe I'll pick one more point, so I'll do a little table of values here. If I pick x is 1, then I get negative 2. Okay, so this is 1, negative 2, so then I would know I would have also negative 1, negative 2. So here's the graph. This is the parabola. That's not the graph we're looking for. We're supposed to do this graph this one here. Okay, so let's go through the steps. What, was, what were those, those steps that we kept doing? The first one is, where was the x-intercept? If there was an x-intercept on this graph, then that led to a vertical asymptote. Okay, what do we have here? No x-intercept. There's no x-intercept. This means no vertical asymptote. Okay, now we will still have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. I've told you that this is always going to be the case in grade 11, but again, let's try to understand why. Well, if we wanted to know where is y equals 0, and we did this, and we cross multiplied again, you're going to get that situ situation where 1 equals 0. This can't happen. Okay, so we're going to have the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Then we were looking for those invariant points. Okay, invariant points were where was the original graph plus or minus 1? Because where there are plus or minus 1, when we take the reciprocal of those, they will still be plus or minus 1. And we have one of them. The graph is negative 1 there. Okay, and then we had this rule. If f of x gets bigger then 1 over f of x must be getting smaller, and vice versa. If f of x is getting smaller, then 1 over f of x must be getting bigger. Well, let's take a look at our graph. What's happening from negative 1? What happens here, and what happens here? Well, we say those numbers are getting bigger, even though they're getting bigger negative, which means they're getting smaller. But that's let's just look at the value of it. So we have negative 2 here, then it's going to be negative 3, negative 4, and it keeps going down here to negative infinity. 
okay? If we keep getting bigger and bigger with our negative numbers, when we take the reciprocal of that, for example, 1 over negative, say, 1 million, what's 1 over negative 1 million? This is a really, really tiny negative number, okay? So the reciprocal of this really big number here would be a really tiny number here. So where this original graph was getting bigger, we'll say, the reciprocal will be getting smaller. It'll be approaching the as asymptote. Okay, and so that's what that graph looks like. It looks like a little speed bump with both of these arrows approaching infinity and approaching the asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, let's try another one. So here again, let's look at the original this is negative x plus 2 squared. The vertex is negative 2, 0. Okay, so that's going to be here. And it opens down. Okay, that means we need a y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be negative 4. So you have this graph. Okay, and now we're going to go through those four steps again. There is an x-intercept at x equals negative 2. That means we now have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I mean, if you look here, and you put a negative 2 there, you end up with 0 squared. That would mean you would have an equation equation with 1 over 0, which is undefined. You can't have that. That's why we have a vertical asymptote here. Okay, let me emphasize again, this green graph I just drew there, that's not the graph. We're just using that information to graph the actual one. Okay? Well, we have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so y is 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Now we're looking for invariant points. Oh, just got to put my charger on here, make sure I don't have a dead battery. Okay, invariant points. So where is it plus or minus 1? Well, there's no plus 1. There's nothing up here. Okay, but at negative 1, we actually have two points. Okay, so that's y value is negative 1. We take the reciprocal of that, it's still going to be negative 1. And then, where the original graph was getting bigger, 1 over f of x is going to get smaller. Well, where is this graph getting bigger? Here and here. So, we're going to have to do this, and we're going to have to do this. And then, where is the original graph getting smaller? Because there, the reciprocal is going to get bigger. So, if you look here, this is approaching zero. So, the reciprocal is going to approach infinity but it can never hit negative 2 because there's an asymptote there. Okay, now one thing we're missing, anytime we have an intercept, we should find it. What is the y-intercept going to be? Well, it's the reciprocal of the original y-intercept. So if f of x is negative 4, what's 1 over f of x? it would be negative one-fourth. Okay? This is basically what we're doing with every point. We're taking the value of f of x and taking the reciprocal of it. So the reciprocal of the x-intercept is a vertical asymptote. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of negative 4 is negative one-quarter. So we've taken every point on the green line and taken the reciprocal of it. Okay, 
Let's do this one. So we'll start with what does this graph look like? Well, it's already factored form, so let's just look at the x-intercepts. They are 1 and negative 1. Uh, we need to know what the vertex is. So let's actually multiply this. So this is negative x squared minus 1, which is equal to negative x squared plus 1. So the vertex is going to be 0, 1. So that's what this parabola looks like. All right. Can you do this? Take a second, pause the video, see if you know what to do next. X-intercepts at plus or minus 1. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Like so, like so. Okay, where are our invariant points? Where is the green graph 1? Right here. Where is it negative 1? Well, somewhere around here. Okay, then where is the original graph getting big? Because 1 over f of x is going to get small. So where is it getting big? The only place I see arrows are down here. Okay, so this, this should start to look familiar. I mean, you see you've got sort of that, this corner made with the asymptotes. Okay, so you should already be seeing that this is going to be a graph that looks something like this. Make sure you go through the invariant points. You're also going to see a graph look something like this. Okay, so that takes care of both where f of x is getting big and where it's getting small. Okay, but now what's going on in between here? In between the two asymptotes? Well, can you see from 1, the original graph is getting smaller both ways? Okay, if it's getting smaller both ways, sorry, I just got to put that back. If it's getting smaller both ways, that means it's approaching 0. Okay, so the reciprocal is going to get big. So we're going to do this, get big approaching the asymptotes. Okay. So what I just did there is I went through the three types here. We have what I call the speed bump. Okay, it could be up or down. We did the one where there's just one asymptote. We did this one. Could also face the other way though. And then we just did this one. Okay, could also be upside down. All right. So those, those are your basic reciprocal graphs. They're going to look like one of those types. Okay, so the graph of the reciprocal function can be used to draw the graph of the related quadratic function. So now this is just going to be working backwards. Okay, so here you have the reciprocal function. So what was the original quadratic? Well, where the asymptote was, there must have been an x-intercept where the graph is 1, those were invariant points. Okay, and I mean you, you could go and find another point if you wanted to, you know, maybe you would say this was 1 quarter so the reciprocal would be up here at 4, but you should see that this graph was like this before we took the reciprocal. Okay, pretty straightforward. If you look here, 
There must have been x-intercepts where the vertical asymptote is. Okay, you see that here is 1, so these must be invariant points. You can also see that this, this point here is at a half, so the reciprocal of that would have been 2. Okay, and if we go to 1 and 1 here, you can see what the original parabola looked like. Okay, that's all you got to do for those ones. And I think that is the end of the lesson. So, what is the homework? Okay, homework is page 680, numbers 3. You can also do the review on page 692. You can do the practice test. All right, we will have our test 8. And then it is exam time, time to study for the year. All right, I would suggest going back through your notes, going back through your homework, going back through old tests. Um, pretty much one question of everything we've done this year. Okay, we'll get more into that. We'll have some uh, me uh, group meetings to discuss that. All right, good luck with your